Wow, what a what a tease of a show. It started off so good. So many yummy, many horsey burgers. Horsey cheeseburgers. So Oh, I'm recording. One moment, folks. Hmm. Maybe I was just thirsty. Oh, and welcome again. To the Bonus Girlfriend Wrestling Show. I am the one and only Hobo Tom. Uh, I'm here to talk about a Memorial Day edition to Monday Night Raw. And before I do that, oops, here. I have my own little Memorial Day tribute. And also, Slicks, this Boombox briefcase video goes out to you across the pond. That's because Slicks and I were, Slicks was commenting on my coverage of Defiant Wrestling on Sunday. Again, if ever you want to get a shout out here on YouTube from this guy, Hobo Tom. All you need to do is uh, one of three things. You can either send an email, leave a comment for one of my things, one of my YouTube shows, or subscribe. And subscribe in public where I can see your name, and you too shall get a shout out. Mm -hmm. Drink. I mean, that was just those burgers for yummy, though. Of course, as on any true blooded American holiday, such as my t shirt represents, I'm not wearing a wrestling shirt, I'm wearing my American flag cat shirt. I had some delicious mini burgers with cheddar cheese and horseradish sauce, french fries, and some tequila and Mountain Dew. Or actually, Mountain Lightning. Yeah, that's right. I can't afford Mountain Dew. Well, about that. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. So I gave my little tribute for Memorial Day, and the WWE did did one as well. And it was actually pretty good. It seemed pretty long, though. Again, for some reason, that upper bowl of these arenas are really being tarped over. Because you could not see anyone sitting above the top row of the lower bowl. And then they had like, so, so, so you have the, the lower bowl. Here you have like sweet, oh, serious, sweets. And then up here was like black. So that's not good. That means attendance is really low. And then trying to limit the tickets they sell. I think at one time they used to give out like free tickets. That doesn't do anything. Um, 
So we had, it starts off with a Brock party. Well, before that, it always goes USA, USA. And then we had a Brock party because he loves that meme of him jamming with his money in the bank briefcase. Hey, I'll give it up to him. He's loving it. He thinks it's the funniest meme ever. Hey, let him run with it. That's his thing now. That's actually pretty cool. I mean, it's really nice and kind of fun to see wrestlers kind of run with something. So it's something that's organic. I'm sure he just wanted to come out and have some fun with it. He didn't realize it was going to be a whole, like, techno-viking thing going on. So then, of course, um, well, they showed that. That was so funny, though. And Kofi Kingston comes out, like Song of Lamps, comes out. I'll tell you what, I'll give those two this. They actually do wear their belts, makes a, so it makes more sense. And again, Brock's just having fun. He comes out the the beatbox briefcase. Hey, whether that's his idea or, or just someone saw it and said, hey, just roll with it, man. I mean, it was fun, though. I mean, Brock looks like he's having fun. I mean, he's in 100%. Um, it was a tease. Brock wants both of them. Then Dolph ambushes Kofi. Brock leaves. Um, Seth kind of leaves. Uh, eventually, Dolph or Xavier Woods comes out, saves him. Um, eventually, Dolph gets up. I thought this was going to lead to like a Xavier, Dol Xavier Woods, Dolph's. Ziggler match? No, it's just kind of rambled on for like 20 minutes. I think someone did it for like the first 58 minutes. There was no wrestling. This is terrible. And Dolph gives a whole soliloquy. Very Brian Pillman esque, I might add. Mm. Yeah. Is Brock coming out? And mainly because Brock looked like he was having fun. He looked like he was enjoying himself. Brock's enjoying himself. I'm probably enjoying myself. The whole crowd was enjoying themselves. But then Dolph came out, gave his soliloquy, and it's like, like we haven't seen any wrestling in almost an hour. What show is this? That's when fans start to leave. Especially now, because I know... There's a whole bunch of school graduations. I know at least they're in Florida for this whole week. No one wants to sit through some nonsense stuff. It's like, we came to see wrestling. And, yeah. Wrestling was okay. I'll, I'll go over the matches. Um, eventually, I have a Memorial Day party. I had by the Usos block party, which is pretty cool. Um, EC3 just looks wrong out of his mind. So he's just sitting there with solo cup in hand. No, it's not a solo cup, but he's just like, yeah, I like this. Yeah, whatever. He looks like he's having the least fun. Um, yeah, it's kind of neat though. Um, you, Craig Maverick was there. I don't want to know who those two, those two or three women were, or who he behind Drake Maverick. The one I swear looked like an ex-girlfriend. Because she had such a familiar face, though. She wasn't a pro wrestler. And there were like two other like just women there. Hey, whatever the Usos do, they're good as long as Naomi is good with that, I guess. So this eventually finally does lead to the first match of the evening. And Shane McMahon decided to cut a promo. And honestly, he just got what? The crowd was not happy. This is awful. This is boring. And it led to a Shane McMahon versus Lance Annoy. 
who is, I guess, the son of Sika, who's one of the wild Samoans, also like the cousin of Roman Reigns. Try to describe the whole Samoan family tree. Trust me, it's it's too long, too convoluted. I don't think I don't think the Minas related to the Usos or Roman Reigns. Maybe she is though. No, she's the Superfly's daughter, I think. Niece. I don't know. I'm not getting involved in all that family stuff. Too complex. But I mean, Drew just comes. Kind of, Drew's out there with Shane. He just destroys poor Lance. It was really not even a wrestling match. A bunch of punches and kicks. Yeah, Shane goes over. Lol, Shane wins. And I'll be honest, this was a piece of toast. I don't like giving out toast as ratings, but this deserved it. Of course, um, eventually Roman Reigns does come out, saves his cousin, and that's okay. Then, of course, there's Brock Part 2. Brock just learned something, folks. He learned he has one entire year catching that money in the bank. He's like, I don't have to do this. I don't, I don't have to do this now. I'm going to wait. He's going to torture Seth with it. If they do do that, where they where Brock shows up, maybe not every Raw, but really darn consistently, like he could take SmackDown off, take Raw off, go to SmackDown instead. I mean, if he's there four times a month, that's more than we've seen him in the past, and that's good. I'm really getting scruffy now. Haircut soon. I need to wash my hair too. But I haven't done anything two days besides sitting in front of the computer. So I can get away with washing my hair for a little bit. Maybe tonight. I don't know. We'll see. See how scuzzy I feel. I feel. Then um, during that, there's a 24 7 chase. It's still pretty fresh in my mind. There was no kind of formal match. Um, AJ Styles, again, is injured. And just to reiterate that, Baron Corbin jumps in, in the medical office. Might be my quickest bra ever. And the next match, finally. Um, you have Becky Lynch and Nikki Cross versus the Iconics. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this, this was a good match. Um, Nikki Cross... She's just funny. Um, Nikki Cross is w either really short or Peyton Royce is really tall. I wonder how much Peyton congratulated her man for his appearance on the AEW. I'm not the only one who's going to bring that up. We'll see later in the show. Um, again, it was okay. Billy, Billy Kay just talks throughout the whole match. Um... <laughs> What's it? I mean, Becky's changed up her whole routine, which makes it feel fresh. It makes it feel interesting. She's doing a lot more top rope stuff. I wonder if that's Seth Rollins' is influence. Indeed. Other than that, I mean, it was kind of like your standard match. I mean, she did a uh, shoulder tackle from the second rope, um, used her second rope leg drop. Uh, eventually, I think, hit her with a, a, a flatliner. I want to say it was Peyton Royce because Nikki Cross pulled Billy Kay outside the ring. And Becky and Becky Lynch and Nikki Cross went over. They beat the champs, so maybe we'll see them get a, get a tag title shot. Who knows? But I don't know. Maybe I was still put to sleep. It's because I did have a big meal. It wasn't that exciting of a show besides the first 20 minutes. I give this a ham sandwich.
Then Lacey Evans shows up, does her strut. I'm so over that. Um, then we go back to the block party. I found out the revival showed up, and then we invite them. She wants everyone, let's all get along. And then we have probably really the match of the night. We have Ricochet and Cesaro Part 2. I don't mind the 50-50 booking in this instance. They're trying to make Cesaro look strong. They're trying to have Ricochet look strong. So you can't have Ricochet eating loss after loss. That's not, that's not going to work. But, I mean, Ricochet, I mean, he does not disappoint. Neither does Cesaro. Both these two are such truly amazing workers in the ring. I could probably watch this for another good month straight. I mean, they could have a best seven match and probably be the next bar, maybe. I mean, Ricochet, he can do stuff. Like, oh, what was the one? Did a um, pop up? Pop up backflip Harakarana. I don't even know what it's called, and I'm probably giving a terrible description of it. Uh, then there was a flippy, twisty thing over the top rope onto the floor. Cesaro put put Ricochet in the stretch. Ooh, that's a Cesaro stretch. I just called that. In. He's a Cesaro thing, and now the Cesaro stretch. I mean, Cesaro is such a smooth ring technician. So good. And Ricochet, still flying flippy stuff. Um, he did some flying fist. And then he did standing shooting star press. I mean, the European uppercut, uppercut when Ricochet's on the top ropes, amazing looking. The torture rack into a power bomb, into a lucha destroyer was one of Ricochet's reversals. That's the best I can describe it. And then the finisher, I think I saw this once in Shikara. It's like a Huracurana, but it's, it's not a reverse Rana. It's like you're doing it the other way forward and it almost goes into like a destroyer i mean i don't even i just say what was that and my eyes whoa so again ricochet went over with that and i'll be honest this was a surf and turf match And this is probably the only saving grace for Monday Night Raw as far as the wrestling goes. And that was a quick U.S. champ recap. I'm Rey Mysterio injured his shoulders. He's going to vacate the title. I think tomorrow on Raw? Oh, no, I'm next week. Next week on Raw. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so Samoa Joe just comes out, cuts a promo like he does. Then we have four-way match, which kind of confused me because they said initially... It was a, f a fatal four-way. Then Corey Graves said it was an elimination match. They do need that continuity officer or that continuity writer. Because when the commentators can't get it right, it's like the one says something, the one's not sure, and the other one's like, yeah, we'll just go with whatever he said. So then I guess it changed into an elimination match. And I'm like, okay, I can see that. But it was uh, Baron Corbin versus The Miz versus Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman. And I was almost certain Braun Strowman was going to win, um, but it's not to be. Um, and well, what happened, initially, it was smart because the two heels, Bobby Lashley and... Baron Corbin to go after Braun Strowman. And for the most part, they just do a lot of tag team work on either Braun Strowman 
or the Miss, who's ever in the ring with her. I mean, they could change the money munition match. Um, kind of team up. I'll tell you what, Bobby Lashley standing vertical suplex on the Miz, who's not that small of a guy. That looked amazing. That's just a test of strength. Um, didn't bear. <laughs> Everyone was on the outside. Braun was upset, so Cody starts to do his running running thing. But the Miz got in his way, so he just he so he just picked Miz up, slammed him to the ring. And then oh no, that's an old cut. And then of course he took down Baron Corbin and Bobby Lashley. Eventually Braun and Lashley just brawl in the crowd. And that allowed Baron Corbin to pick up the pin on Miz. And that was the end of the match. So I guess it went from an elimination match to a fail four way. Or was it an elimination match, but Ron and Lashley left? I don't know. Um, then there was another 24 7 chase through the uh, Usos block party. Flyerfly Funhouse. Again, it was a paper plate mask. Everyone remembers making a paper plate mask. In like kindergarten, so that showed up there. Uh, I forget what he called it. Um, and he's, he's, it's kind of teasing that dual personality, Abby. And then, of course, Dr. Bray comes out, calls Abby a bully. Uh, he says he's in limbo, and then crowd, crowd walks the wim limbo. So that was pretty good. And then, probably the worst segment of the night. The, the worst, but yet the best, only because of what Sami Zayn says. I'm trying to keep this under three minutes so I don't have to make it, make, do this, stop and do this over again. Um, Sami Zayn's in an electric chair interview. Corey Graves just put, tells him to sit in, an elect, in a real electric chair while Charlie Caruso goes out and asks people questions. Again, Sami Zayn has no real answer <laughs> except for with. Uh, someone asked about, do you miss the Snap Gingers? And it's like, you know what? You shouldn't be asking me if I miss Becky Lynch. You should be asking Seth about Becky Lynch. Oh! And then uh, some other guy asked him a question and said, and I don't know what his reply was. And he gave the response like, why are you asking me all these kayfabe questions? Well, to paraphrase, why are you asking me all these wrestling questions? You would be asking me anything. What's your love like? Like, oh, I am a great kisser. Listen, I am a good kisser. I know that. Um, you would be asking me anything. Ask me about AEW. Oh, he said that. I hope, for his sake, Vince told him to say that. If not, it's going to be, see you later, Sami Zayn. Uh, the crowd cheered and started to chant AEW. But this, uh, besides the, the um, cut on Seth about Becky and the AEW, this was awful. And the match wasn't that great either. It was Sami Zayn versus Seth Rollins. I guess Seth Rollins got upset because his love life was mentioned. Whatever. Um, Sami Zayn's the cowardly healer. He runs around the ring a lot. Um, Seth just beats up Sammy. Sa Sammy then runs away. Eventually, Sammy does get his comeback moment. Seth gets his comeback. Um, uh, Seth appeared to tweak his knee. I don't think he did. They always stay. I'm getting kind of sick of that spot where they just jump and like, oh, my knee. It buckled. Knees don't buckle like that. My knee buckled once. You do not get up a buckled knee. Trust me, my knee was the size of a softball the next morning. And not where it should be a softball size. The side of my knee was a I know exactly what I did to that knee. Seth didn't do a thing to his knee. Um, again, Zane's not no dummy. He goes after the knee, puts on a figure four. Um, eventually, Sammy Zane. The blue Falcon bomb doesn't doesn't pin anyone. It's like the Falcon's arrow doesn't pin anyone. 
Um, Seth does hit two stomps on his enemy Zane wins the match. And really a mediocre ham sandwich match. And then it just went dark. I think there was like, according to people, like there was some funny segment with Lana and Rusev because that crowd was not happy. And I mean, after AEW, this was a really lackluster Raw. Besides the first 20 minutes with Brock, the fact that Brock's just lo loving life right now is fun. And of course, the Ricochet Cesaro match. And that was Monday Night Raw. But I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, stay tuned for my next video tomorrow or Wednesday morning. And I'll see everyone later. Bye.